Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. And I, before we get going with our guest tonight, I'd really like to thank everybody here at Thurston County Media. The staff is amazing and the volunteer crew here is just fantastic. We really appreciate it, all of us at Senior Services for South Sound, the ability to come into your home and tell you about programs for seniors and about seniors and also help spread the word about how wonderful seniors are in our community. So thank you, Thurston County Media. We really appreciate it. Well. For our program today, we have a wonderful guest who I've met through the Senior Action Network, and that is Mark Egan. Welcome, mm -hmm. Mark. Thank you, thank and you. And you're with um, Delphi Insurance. Yep, Delphi Insurance Solutions. Solutions, and you've yep. been doing this for quite a few years now. Yeah, I started back in 2014, and uh -huh. um, I started out representing just one company, and, and then last year I expanded uh, uh -huh. to, to multiple companies. All right. So. All right. Well, um, I think I told you right before we started that I am quickly approaching that magical age of 65. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just really excited because I know what you do really in the community is a lot of educating of people of all of the different ins and outs of not only Medicare, but right. the lower income Medicaid program. Correct. So you don't even have to assume. Just know that I don't know as much as I should know about it. and. I'd love to have your help educating me. You bet, you bet. One of the things I do with, with the clients when I first meet them, and many of them are like you with just what we call aging in, mm -hmm. is partly I like to explain how Medicare works because the insurance itself is different from most other types of insurance you've had in the past, whether it's uh, group insurance through the employer or whatever. So I will sit with people and explain to them how the Medicare system works and the um, um, there's always some holes within the Medicare coverage and so it's important for them to understand what it's gonna cost if they only had the original Medicare, which is the Medicare Part A and B. Mm -hmm. From there, <clears throat> I will then educate them on what options are available for insurance that you can add to the original Medicare. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets confusing. And the biggest part is for them to understand, it sounds like when you, especially when you start getting of age, all of a sudden you start getting this mail. Mm -hmm. You got 10 <laughs> pounds of mail arriving and it's like, whoa, what is all of this information? And so my goal is to not only simplify that, and explain that even though it looks like you have a thousand different options, that really you can narrow those options down to two possibilities. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what I do is simplify things and make it easier for people. Once you understand the different options, whether you go to a Medicare supplement plan, which is one option, or a Medicare Advantage plan, which is another option, then it becomes a little easier in understanding what are these things? What are these words even mean? And mm -hmm. um, from there, it's pretty simple because it's, it's a long process and there's a lot of information out there. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that will uh, get the wrong information. And mm -hmm. so through my education and training, which I just finished recertifying with, with all of the different um, uh, companies and with Medicare itself, I take the slow approach in, in explaining or educating people on what everything means, even the, the basic definitions, mm -hmm. because I always thought that you couldn't really make an educated decision without really understanding how it works mm -hmm. and understanding what those options really are. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good, it's a, it's a, a rewarding process for me mm -hmm. because Medicare insurance is complicated. And to have someone to explain how it works and to simplify it mm -hmm. is really important and, and I, I take that seriously mm -hmm. and, and it's a, it, it's a good, um, it's a good experience for me. It's one of the most rewarding types of jobs I've had mm -hmm. over the years. I've been in consulting for, oh gosh, 
20, 25 years, mm -hmm. and uh, by far the Medicare insurance side of it is uh, rewarding because of the people I get to, to work with. Mm -hmm. And So I know you do seminars around the yes. community all yes. over Pierce and Thurston and mm -hmm. probably other counties. Um, our usual seminar will last about how long while you're doing the education? Well, piece? there's two types of seminars I give, and they're both... One of them is a more formal presentation where I spend a half hour going over Medicare basics mm -hmm. and explaining what the different options are between Medicare supplements versus Medicare Advantage plans, how the rules are with Medicare. With that meeting, there's another half hour of going over product-specific information, mm -hmm. so it's about an hour. Mm -hmm. Most of the meetings that I will do this coming se uh, October mm -hmm will be the less formal, um, more educational, where it's only covering that first half hour. Mm -hmm. So it's really good. It gives me an opportunity to not only remind people who have been on Medicare for years, I run into a lot of people that have been on Medicare for five, 10, 15 years, and still really don't know how it was supposed to work, mm -hmm. or even uh, what the process is. So. The meetings that I'm going to be giving this year are going to be uh, purely the, the shorter half hour uh, meetings that mm -hmm. are really good in understanding how Medicare works, how the different insurances work that you can add to it, and um, understanding how you might choose between one option versus the other. Mm -hmm. And from there, for those that are interested, I schedule one-on-one -on -one consultations in a more private setting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're talking when you say October, so that's like the open enrollment For period the open enrollment. people can change what they're doing. It's, Correct. If they're already on Medicare, they can change during that time, basically October through like the first it's, week of... It's, it's October 15th through December 7th. Okay. And during that period of time, if, if you are already eligible for Medicare or already have a Medicare plan, you can either add or change your existing policies and it gives people a chance to explore options that maybe they didn't consider before. Mm -hmm. And um, I also during that time of year explain all the new changes that have come about. There's going to be some uh, changes for 2020. Mm -hmm. So all the information I cover during that those meetings are based on the 2020 for next year because mm -hmm. anything that you get during that time of year would begin um, January 1st of two, mm -hmm. 2020. Right. During that time, I may still run into people that are aging in or retiring that they can um, apply for um, uh, coverage before that time, before the January start time. Uh -huh. So I always have people that are like that. That's still like, yeah. Yep. Okay, so I know there's also some special things and relationships between people who are on Medicare but also qualify for Medicaid or right. some low income benefits. Yep. There's two basic programs. One that is administered through Social Security and one that's administered through DSHS. Mm -hmm. So the one administered through DSHS, which is partly funded through federal programs, is part of the Medicaid program and the the policies are are, are 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 part of what we call the Medicare Savings Program. Depending on what level of Medicaid people have, it may cover um, all their copays, all their deductibles, and additional services. They're referred to as full dual eligible. So they're eligible for full Medicaid and Medicare. And so there are even additional plans specifically tailored to the dual eligible uh, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I try to help people that may or uh, qualify for those programs and determine whether or not they, they do qualify mm -hmm. and, and point them to the resources available through DSHS. Mm -hmm. If their income is a little bit higher, they may be partially dual where they make a little bit too much money for full coverage, but they still can get assistance in paying their Medicare Part B uh, premiums. Mm -hmm. And through the program 
uh, that is administered through Social Security, there's a program called Extra Help, and Extra Help um, will, if depending on your income, help pay for copays and deductibles mm -hmm. and even premiums for the Medicare Part D or prescription coverage. Uh -huh. That could be helpful for somebody. Very else. helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. And and uh, although I don't directly. I'm not directly involved with those programs. Mm -hmm. I have become very knowledgeable on the the criteria for them, mm -hmm. and so I can help direct people uh, where to go to apply for it, mm -hmm. or or even guide them through that process. Mm -hmm. So I figure that it's it's beneficial to to my clients if mm -hmm. they may be eligible for that stuff, to to guide them through that process. And and here's the thing, whether I meet someone individually or at my class, whether it has to do with Medicare or people who may be dual eligible or even partial dual eligible, I n there's never a, a fee for that. It's always uh, free information. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had people ask me before, why don't you charge for, <laughs> for having your meetings? Uh -huh. Well, I'm, I'm not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it's, you go. Against, it's against the law. Uh -huh. But even if it weren't, I feel that it's so valuable to offer that information, mm -hmm. and my my number one goal is to to some of those programs I do not directly provide, mm -hmm. but I want to understand them so I can help people uh, get Find the additional need. needs. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. So if somebody were interested in coming to an educational seminar, mm -hmm. um, how can they find out what's available in the community, whether it's you or somebody yep, else? Yep, know. that's a great question. And here's the thing, um, most of the meetings that I'm gonna be given, which will begin in October, I can't even advertise or disclose until October 1st. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yep. There are lots of rules and yes, regulations. Yes, there, there's a, a lot of people think that, you know, uh, as, as agents, oh gosh, they do whatever they want. No, there's a lot of regulations that we follow and one of them is that if I'm gonna have one of those meetings, uh, there, uh, we're, I, I won't advertise for them or even discuss uh, when they'll be until October 1st, uh, but they, I do have a, um, we will be sending out notifications in the mail to, to people and um, I'm uh, hopefully can um, post those at various senior centers uh -huh. as far as when and where they'll be. Okay, so and also I think um, our wonderful producer Tom has your email and he'll probably oh, put that up. Can great. people email you and Absolutely. once October 1st is there you can Absolutely. send out your Right, and so, and if, if someone were interested in knowing when uh, a meeting is, if they contact me after October 1st, I can then say when the meeting is. Uh -huh. Now, if someone is, for instance, and that's just if someone wants to inquire about the annual enrollment period for 2020 uh, plans or right. options, mm -hmm. if someone is either retiring or aging in, mm -hmm. they're gonna have a birthday and turn 65, or maybe some people will get Medicare if they are permanently disabled in receiving SSDI. Mm -hmm. After 24 months, month 25, they're thrown into Medicare. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I have people even in their 20s and 30s that are on Medicare. So for those people, they can contact me at any time. Uh, and okay. and I'd be more than happy to uh, discuss so, um, educate them and educate help them. with right. them show them how it works and mm -hmm. and um, I, I typically like to meet one on one in somewhere quiet mm -hmm. and where you know Get we can just and, yeah. We, and yeah I I don't want to be talking where uh, you know like on the bus and hey uh, right. private information needs to uh, be kept private so yeah. it's. It, it's it's always best to mm -hmm. be somewhere private, and occasionally I'll meet at at a, a Denny's, but make mm -hmm. sure I go in a back corner somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, lots to think about for either people thinking about the open enrollment coming up October through early December. Mm -hmm. Lots to think about if you're facing your 65th birthday here yep. pretty quickly. Yep. 
um, and even like you said, those people that on, are on social security disability, if they're timing out to their 24th right. month. Right, and usually uh, for those people on the, mm -hmm. the receiving social security disability insurance, mm -hmm. Uh, DSHS will typically know, or well, DS, either DSHS or Social Security, maybe Social Security. Social Security will notify them mm -hmm. usually four or five months uh, before they hit month 25 or month 24, uh -huh. and they'll say, "By the way, we're kicking you off of uh, Apple Health and and putting you on Medicare," and people panic. Uh huh. And right. so, they well, they don't know. They don't, they, they don't know. What does this mean? What's going to happen to me? And I, I meet with a lot of people mm -hmm. like that to guide them through that process because that's really complicated. And unless you understand those programs, and some don't, I'm right. very, I'm intimately familiar with the all of those programs. So when someone is approaching that and they get that letter saying. What do you mean I'm losing Apple Health? Mm -hmm. I'm going on Medicare. What does that mean? Now what? Right. Panic. But I, I'm i very familiar with that and I help a lot of people with that. So. Okay. Well, great, Mark. And I thank you. Thanks for being part of the Senior Action Network. Yeah, and thank you. Thanks for the good education that you do in the community. Now, do you ever refer people to the SHIBA program at all through the um, Office of the Insurance Commissioner? I, I mention that, and uh -huh. I will talk about that. I, mm -hmm. It's more often than not that someone has has been there oh, and have okay. come to me for for, for more, more specific. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I as a general rule, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. uh, uh, send them that way because uh -huh. I feel that uh, uh, you know most of the information I have, mm -hmm. the initial information is uh, very detailed information, mm -hmm. and uh, unless it's about if they wanted information on a product that I do not have available, uh -huh. then, then you would send them um, that yeah. way. Okay. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come in and thank you. help educate me. And I'll look forward to more thorough education when I can <laughs> sign up for one of your classes. There you go. There okay. You go. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Okay.